Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Carlos, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have another very interesting topic, and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker, who is going to talk about the role of communication in relationship, business, and research, and how to improve it. Communication is one of the key elements in achieving success in relationship, business, or anything. So how to do it better in a way that you become a successful in life. So really very interesting topic, and I'm sure in this session you are going to do so many new things because we have an expert with us in today's this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank Carlos for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing us such a wonderful platform. The aim of Carlos is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, suggestions, and tips which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have another uh, amazing person as guest who is a multi-dynamic person with a wonderful experience, internationally known and recognized speaker. He is a great human being who is always ready to support and contribute to the world in different positive ways. So let me introduce her formally. She is the founder and CEO of the Corusel Mom Business and Leadership Coaching, ranked for among the top entrepreneurs for 2023 by Entrepreneur Harold Seven among the top 30 business coaches for 2022 by the NYC Journal, top courageous women in the business in 2022 by Courageous Women magazine, and top 10 female coaches in 2021 by Yahoo Finance. In addition to that, she is the recipient of two honorary doctorates, Asia's Outstanding Women Leadership and Mentoring Coach Award by the Asia Award in association with the Rula Award uh, a world chem uh, chamber uh, to Fakhri Pakistan pride of, of performance award Kaidi Azam gold medalist hall of fame and numerous international awards world records and recognition she has been featured on many channels newspapers and magazines globally she is an award winning nine times international best selling author including one with the global legend Les Brown she is an internationally certified business and leadership coach, international speaker and mentor. She is the mother of two awesome buddy young adults. She has gone from nine to five job to a homemaker, masters, uh, the catechist, the counselor, hypnotherapist, the uh, psychotherapist, timeline therapist, and the NLP master practitioner. She is a passionate about empowering women globally to soar to their success, start their own business, gain financial stability, uh, build self-confidence, overcome the traumas, mind and emotional blocks. She conducts one, uh, one on one and group coaching both line, online and in person. Last but not the least, she is a wonderful speaker, author, researcher, professional and above everything, a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Dr. Daphne Soros, welcome to the Carlos platform and thank you very much for joining us, Prof. Thank you so much yes. for this wonderful introduction and opportunity. I'm really excited to be on this platform and dive in with your awesome audience. Thank you so much and really it's a pleasure to have you with us. So over to you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start, my friends. I hope you have your notebook and pen with you because I'll ask you to take a lot of notes, make as much notes as you like. And yes, if you have any doubts and still need further clarity, note down your questions and we will do our best to answer it at the end. So let's go on as Dr. Heather has already introduced me. I am the founder and CEO of Carousel Mums Business and Leadership Coaching. Okay. So our topic for today is the role of communication in relationship, business, and research, and how to improve it. 
I would like to break this topic into different parts to make it easier. And I have divided it into four parts. So it'll be very easy for you to grasp and move along. So the first part would be the role of communication in relationships. Relationships is very deep and very much needed. Communication in relationships is at the core. It is about connecting and using your verbal, written, and physical skills to fulfill your needs and others' needs. It's not about making small talk. Hi, how are you? Good evening. You're looking nice. Can I talk to you? No, 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 no. It goes much, much deep. That's why, as you can see, the word communication is so many letters, and in is only so small. So it's a narrow gate to enter through, I and in. And the communication and the relationships are such big words, as you can see. It has to be long, it has to be worked upon, and it has to be built upon. So it's about understanding the other person's viewpoint, offering support, and being present for them. And communication is not a one-way traffic. It is a two-way traffic. If you want to be heard, you want to be loved, you want to be wanted, the other person feels the same. So it's a give and a take. Otherwise, it's not going to progress. So what do we see in the role of communications in relationships? Increase trust. That is the starting point for all relationships. Real communication in relationships means that you can go to your partner or your other person, be it a friend, your boss, or your colleague, sharing happiness and sadness, good days and the bad. You're willing to be vulnerable with them because you know that they will support you and love you no matter what. It is unconditional love and unlimited. Absolute courage and vulnerability is one of the five disciplines of love. When I speak of love, don't only put your focus on romance, because that's a sad part that I've experienced in business. When you talk about love, people think it's, you know, a love, love, love between a man and a woman. Love is the greatest thing. If you don't love your parents, you don't love your siblings, you don't love your classmates, your colleagues, the, your next door neighbor. My friends, it's never, ever going to work. You know, you look beautiful in clothes when you love your uh, clothes, when you love your hairstyle. You love the party. You go to for a reception and you say, wow, that was an amazing party. You love it. Is it a romance? No. You'll say, well, like, how are you bringing romance into loving my clothes? I like the way I dress, a certain shalwar kameez. I like it. An ajrak, a dupatta, I love it. So this is what I want you to work on your mind in getting more clarity on in true love. As I spoke about the five disciplines of love, I won't let you just be uh, like, you know, trying to swim to understand what I am saying, but I will dive in deep on this topic because real communication in relationships means that you just get on at all times and love is patient, love is kind, love is unconditional. So point number one, unconditional love and compassion. Always Put the other person first. It's not about you. When you develop the skill of heartfelt understanding, you become conscious of your partner's friend or colleague's inner life. Rather than being an observer and critic, you feel what they feel and you will discover the deep joy of the relationship. So, Awesome. I just love that. Number two, absolute courage and vulnerability. Love no matter what and commit to absolute truth. Commit to absolute truth. Stop hiding. My friends, the pandemic is over. The masks are over. 
Let me tell you, people did not start wearing masks only with a pandemic. We always wore masks. And that was the invisible mask. Why should somebody know what I do? I have a problem. I have a financial problem. I have a little disagreement. My children are sick. I did not do well. My children did not study well in an exam. My results are not good. We always, always putting those masks. How can someone help you if they do not know the truth? It's like when you are drowning, you go to a pool. There are always signboards there to call and there is a lifeguard there. Until they don't see your hand going up and literally screaming for help, they won't know you need help. I remember many years back when my uh, kids were small, my daughter took her little doll to the swimming pool. And she wanted the doll to go with her because that was her little sister, her little baby. So she took the doll. And then the lifeguards called out to us and said, excuse me, we cannot have this because we are trained with this and we will not understand from, uh, from the way we are sitting that this is not an emergency that your baby is playing with a doll. So please remove the doll from the pool. So do you understand how they felt as lifeguards, the importance to save life. So if you want somebody to help you, even right now, as I am delivering this, if you want to understand better, you want to help, you have to have the courage to speak, be vulnerable and say, hey, I need help because you can never know everything. As much as Dr. Heather is an amazing person, I have my knowledge, I cannot know everything full stop. You need to get this very, very clear. Even if you conquer the world with your education, you cannot do everything. So be present for the other person during the most painful situations. This is something my husband has always said before our marriage also. He says, you know a true friend when they are there in your hour of need. Everyone will smile with you, but I will tell you, my friends, few will cry with you and be there as your shoulder. If you have got married, count the amount of people you invited for your wedding and 10 years later, tell me how many people are sticking by you. The truth will be in front of you with clear results. Don't just be physically present. Be fully present. What do I mean by physically present? Many times when friends are talking, they're all sitting together and one is stuck on their mobile. Because it's technology time. They're answering messages. And yes, yes, I'm listening. Just keep on talking. Go ahead. No, put the device away. Sit down. Listen to people because they want to be heard. Like right now, I'm sharing with you. I want you to be heard, to hear me. If you're not hearing me and you're busy, you know, cooking and saying, yeah, 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 she's speaking. I'm listening. I'm learning. Why am I wasting my time on you? Same way when you ask some questions. You want me to hear you. So hearing is so important that the good Lord has given you two ears and only one mouth. If he wanted you to only talk, talk, talk or be uh, speechless and keep on socializing on social media while you are with your friend, then he would have given you no mouth or he would have given you three mouths. But, you know, we talk a lot even with our one mouth. So God bless us what hap would happen if we had more than one mouth. Anytime you lose trust, interest or commitment, you drift closer to behaviors of criticism and rejection. Stay connected, cultivate your commitment the way you would be a precious gem or a flower. Your relationship will flourish no matter what your life circumstances will, will be. And this, I'm not just talking the talk, I have walked the talk. That when you have gone through all this, when your friendship and connection is so true, I'm telling you, no one will leave you. Even if you're rich or you're poor, you're happy or you're sad, you're young or you're old, you're fat or you're thin, they will love you unconditionally. And you need to strive for this kind of communication in your relationship. Number two, absolute courage and vulnerability. Here's the truth. It's a no blame game. There's an art to expressing mild upset without creating big problems 
when you let something bother you, the other person will feel blamed. However, when something goes wrong, you must express yourself spontaneously and from the heart. It's from the heart where everything truly starts. It's crucial you set context carefully for anything you share. Remember to use phrases that avoid blaming the other person. Knowing the truth. Commit to moment-to-moment -moment awareness of the impact of your state. Is the basis of trust and confidence in the other person. You must begin with confidence in yourself. This is a huge issue. You might say you trust your friend, your partner, the other person. But my question to you first is, do you trust you? If you don't trust your own self, how can you trust somebody else? This goes into the circles of control that you control first. What is within your control is your own personal self before you try to control others or help others. Without it, you cannot induce lasting trust in others. When you can be yourself, others will perceive that and build trust in you. People are not fools. They can see through your game if you have secondary game and you're using them. So avoid using people. Hold true to your generosity of your highest intention. So be generous with your time, your talent, and what you have. Give uh, freedom. I do not know why has in this move. Yes, give freedom. The power of forgiving, forgetting, and flooding. Oh my God, this is a big issue. I might tell you, okay, I forgive you. It's okay, the mistake that you've done, but I will not forget it. After 10 years, I will say, you did this to me on so-and-so day. This is not freedom. You have to forgive and you have to forget. Stop keep on piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up. It's like your wardrobe. You stop wearing a garment. You don't need it. Give it to the poor or throw it out. But if you keep it in your cupboard, it's going to keep piling as you shop more and more things. So how can you get declutter? So to declutter your life, you need to give freedom. Why drag along the baggage of past mistakes? Whenever we have painful experiences, we can learn from them and do not use them to punish yourself or punish others. Life is short. Life is beautiful. Leave fond memories that others can hold on to. People only blame others for past misdeeds. If you want passion, set the other person free without any cost, but only your heart and your love. See their mistakes from their perspective. Consciously harness the good in life to bring greater pleasure and intimacy with your friend, your colleague, your boss, and everyone. Let's move to our second part, the role of communication in business. What is communication in business? Business communication is exchanging information between employees and those outside the organization. And why is it outside? Because we need clients, right? We need customers. Now, your university wouldn't work and run if it did not have students. So definitely you have to exchange information for people to apply for admission and join your institute or join your company or buy your product or your services. Employees and management interact with one another through effective communication to accomplish organizational goals. If they, or each other, we don't know anything about each other, how can we promote? If you are a student of this institute and somebody asks you and you say, I don't know what they do, then who knows? You are going day in and day out to this institute. You are interacting with them. You should be the in-person. If the staff, the faculty doesn't know, business is not a one-man show. 
it is a joint venture of people working in unity and harmony and having full transparency and communication. It aims to reduce errors and enhance organizational procedures because each organization and institute has their own policies, their own vision and mission. So you need to be aware and that can only happen. Awareness is created through communication. Business communication is the heart of a company's success. Internal business communication is at the heart of the company's success because it affects everything from employee happiness, customer relationships, clients to branding identity at net earnings. People see through the game if you are not communicated, you're, there is no awareness and transparency, there is going to be a lot seen. Now, a little bit, we'll uh, dive into some researches as, you know, you're, uh, some of you are researchers and students. Despite its significance, 57% 50 per 57 of U.S. companies surveyed do not have dedicated internal communication specialists. And 60% of business professionals say they do not measure their internal communication outcomes. Giving these numbers, it's no surprise that 65% of workers were reported to be disengaged in the workplace, according to a Gallup poll. A report from the Economist Intelligence Unit points to why. This can be largely attributed to employees citing added stress, 52%, delay or failure of complete a pro to complete a project, 44%, and low morale, 31%. As a result, poor communication. Four types of business communication and how they can help. To improve upon these findings, which I have shared, business leaders should make strides in fully understanding the four main types of business communication. We delve into them below, as well as how their effective inflammation can have a positive impact on both internal teams and key external relationships. Generally speaking, the four leading types of business communication include upward, downward, lateral, and external. There is no one right way to communicate within an organization, an institute, or a business. However, carefully considering the pros and the cons of each type will help you determine which strategies are best for your team and your organization and also be employing multiple types of communication would be the best. So use multiple modes because everybody is different. One cap doesn't fit all. So everyone having their own backgrounds, their own mindsets, their own experience, their own talent and knowledge. Make sure that you use all the types. All right. So the four types. Let's start with number one and dive more deeper into it. Upward communication. What do I mean by upward communication? Upward communication comes from a direct report to a manager and from a manager to a top level executive or owner. Upward communication allows those in charge to keep a finger on the pulse of what's happening on the ground level. How it works in action. Let me give you some examples. A data specialist prepares a marketing report containing website analytics to feed decision making at the top level. Second example would be employee surveys provide the basis for executives to make changes to daily operations to improve productivity and satisfaction. Now let's work on the pros. What are the pros of the upward communication? 
information received from team members helps management remain responsive to the needs of the employees in contributing in this way employees who feel valued will be more inclined to provide their best efforts at their jobs management can identify issues early before they are escalated easy access to management allows employees to share their creativity and innovative which could motivate company progress to be leaps and bounds faster than if teams were completely siloed businesses with upward communication are typically known for fostering a friendly harmonious atmosphere now don't only be very much about the pros there are also cons to this okay so there there's always two sides right the negative and the positive to everything that we say and do so what are the cons the accuracy of employee supplied information can be limited or depending on their comfort level with communication with their survivors and supervisors subordinates may be unwilling to share information with management particularly if they feel like no action will be taken or there will be consequences as you know how normally subordinates have their fear of the seniors or losing their job upward communication can only be successful if there is a clear accessible and swift chain of command all the way to the top so we move to the next point downward communication it is a uh, communication that flows from management to direct reports messages flow through a predetermined hierarchy from the top down for example the first example i would give was is leadership informs employees of a new operational procedure safety requirement or individual expectations through a company memo number 2 a manager communicates project information to the team number 3 the ceo holds a meeting to cover the previous year's performance numbers and discuss next year's goals many of you who are working in a company must have and those who are in the faculty must have experienced this as we have just transitioned from 2022 to 2023 so you know it's always going back on the previous numbers and the new year's goals all right so what's the pros of the downward communication necessary communication instructions examples and complex issues and operational details can be quickly dissemented in a downward flow there's an easier delegation of key responsibilities managers are empowered to take on appropriate authority company specified standards rules and disciplines consequences can be easily reinforced to uphold compliance now i want to take you to the negative part so let's go to the cons it can be a slow process especially when information must flow through multiple levels of hierarchy also don't forget the game we played as ch children the chinese whispers i whisper something in your ears you god knows what you hear and you pass it to the next person and by the time the last person hears it oh lord save me you did, it was not what the first person said and it used to be really a fun game to play so this is similar the call of the downward it keeps on passing to so many so everyone's processing it in a different way it's also like the game of telephone the information can also become distorted or lose detail on its way through the chain of command that we used to play as kids heavy reliance on a downward communication style can make employees feel unimportant frustrated or unenthusiastic about their work we all want to feel important right and that we matter and that we are being heard the next lateral communication it moves across departments and employees or managers of equal status 
within the organization. Now, how does this work? I'm sure now you're in tune and you're waiting for some examples. A team communicates back and forth via emails. Number two example would be co-workers participate in a team chat to resolve an issue. Next, managers call in for brainstorming sessions. Number four would be a member of the marketing team discusses modifying an ad campaign design with a web designer or technology team. These are the few examples. And now we move on to the pros of, cat of lateral communication. It is often necessary for information sharing, problem solving, and task coordination. It is especially vital for large scale enterprises that rely upon interdepartmental coordination. It tends to synthesize organically without the need for upper level approval, serving as a rapid and morale boosting mode of communication. Misunderstanding and conflict can often be nipped in the bud while simultaneously strengthening the work team. Employees often feel supported both emotionally and socially. Now, what are the cons in this? Employees may communicate in a more casual, unprofessional tone, causing potential squabbles. Can create an us versus them. Culture, if no other interdepartmental, hierarchical communication channels are properly established. Teams may go, grow territorial about the tasks they're working on and resent interjections from other departments, thereby determining collaborative efforts. So each one, now we have just completed point three. So you can see upward communication, downward, lateral, each one has its plus and its uh, minus, its positive and its negative points. Now to the last of this part is the external communication. This helps move information from the inside of the institute or organization to the outside parties. That is your clients, your customers, or your students if you are in university or an institute. It also passes it on to the outside such as prospects, investors, vendors, partners, sponsors, lawmakers, regulatory bodies, the media, consultants, and the general public. So external is de definitely because you cannot, no university, no institute, no business can thrive without the external part, right? So that's where you need to really. Now, what's the, pro uh, we, let's see what are the examples. Uh, number one is a press release is deployed to inform the media about a new product coming out. The second uh, example would be a sales proposal to present to generate interest from investors. Number three, a website informs prospects they, why they may want to take the company's products or services. Now, again, this has a, its own pros. What's the pros? When performed successfully, external communication has a positive impact on the company's public persona and reputation, making it more desirable to stakeholders and customers and clients. External communication is also directly tied to customer communications and the ability to create and maintain those relationships. So the quality of this kind of communication is of utmost importance. External communications are how outside businesses, customers, partners, investors, and the rest of your audience perceive your business and your institute and get to know it ensuring that every piece of external communication 
is carefully curated and takes time to do so. But when done right, it is a significant contribution to the institution and company growth. The cons. When poorly executed, external communications can present customers with conflicting messages that tarnish the company's reputation. One wrong piece of data, a missed target audience, or careless quote can sink an entire marketing campaign and have a lasting negative impact on the institute or company's ability to succeed. So each piece of externally facing communication needs to be carefully curated and analyzed. So my dear researchers, please be very careful because this is speaking directly with you because as researchers, you are serving your clients. You are being trained. Be very, very careful because the company's institution's reputation lies on your shoulder. It's not only a matter of hiring you for a certain project. You get your money and you go. No, 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 no. no. Again, your love, love, love goes back into it. Love what you do. That when you do what you love, yes, you may have uh, signed a contract or maybe temporary. But what happens? That person is so happy and overwhelmed. They will talk about you. They will share with others. They will refer others. And there's no greater uh, success in a business and university and institution is referrals by word of mouth. You can go buying all the you know, ads on social media, the Facebook, Instagram, every, spend millions of dollars. But I tell you, you will surely fail. You will, you will lose your money and you lose a lot. But how much you can gain from word of mouth. Wow, I am a business owner and I know how much testimonials, referrals and word of mouth has helped me to soar to my success. And still I keep soaring without stopping. So please, my dear students, my dear friends, my dear audience, hear me clear in all that you say and you do. And even if you are not a business owner, you're not a student researcher, maybe you're just working in a job. Remember, we need to survive for life, right? And we need money. So you need jobs all the time. So if you want to change job, you have not connected a good rapport and lasting relationships with your current company. Do you think they want to give you a good letter? No, they don't. They don't want to refer you because you were a pain in the neck. You were a disease. You were toxic to their company, to their institute. So it's so, so, so very important to build our communication and build everything that we can do. Without good internal communication, employees will likely struggle with creating good external communication. I hope you have heard me loud and clear. Let's move on. And give me just a second to just wet my throat a bit. Okay, the third part, the role of communication in research. When Howard scientists tracked 268 men for more than 75 years to figure out what makes for a good life, their findings could be summed up in just five words, according to the project's founder. Happiness is love. Full stop. So write these words. They're just five words. Happiness is love. Full stop. You have five words. This is their finding. And as you can see, 75 years they took to figure this out. It's not an overnight thing because communications, relationships, even your research that you are doing 
You can't just go and say that you did a research if you just studied of uh, something that happened two days ago or something that happened the, in the pandemic. You know you have to do something that happened before the pandemic, in the pandemic and after the pandemic to make your uh, research really successful. So it takes years and years and I must really wow you guys for going into research. It's not an easy topic, but you are talented you are unique, you are blessed, and I am highly proud to be interacting with each one of you. Now, better conflict resolution. All relationships have ups and downs. That's the fun of it, right? Even when we eat food, we like the spice, we like the chili powder, we like the pepper, we like the salt, we like the oil. So, you know, it's blend, you know, where God forbid you get ill and you go to the hospital. That Food is terrible. It's so sickening that you're already a patient. They will make you a patient pa impatient. Do you see there's some spice always with a little bit of conflict, adds it and makes us strong to see as long as you uh, look at it positively and you learn from the conflict. So all relationships have ups and downs, both frequent fighting and no fighting at all are signs of a lack of communication. So disagreements, joy, sorrows, fun, laughter, everything, a blender, you know, it's a beautiful thing. The key isn't to never disagree with the other. It's to improve your conflict resolution skills so that when disagreements do happen, you're able to turn them into something that strengthens your relationship instead of tearing it down. Let me share a little bit with you that I has just come up into my mind. This reminds me, you know, the relationship that we have, uh, I've created with my kids is very wonderful is that I know they say that, you know, sometimes it's not good to be a friend of your kids. But I tell you, really, I found the bonding has been amazing with my spouse and with my kids. Now that my kids are young adults, you know, we share a lot of things. And sometimes I talk to them, even in my business, if I'm, you know, a little bit not able to decide to do something. And I would say that my a coach has a coach, a counselor has a counselor. And for me, my coach and my counselor is my very own daughter. And she is fabulous. She is amazing. And I will tell you that what has bound our relationship, I understand the way she sees things being a younger generation in the early 20s. And for me to be the mother, I have responsibilities, authority. And as an adult, the way I see it. And sometimes... Even things that I don't want to hear it. She'll say, you know, mom, what I want to say? You are wrong in this point. And I know sometimes my face, my mood changes. She says, I know you don't like it, but I will say it. But today I was just telling her, I was on a call just a little earlier. And I told her, you know, darling, I love you for this. You're so much. I know that sometimes I want to kill you, honestly. But, you know, I love you. Literally, we are so... Uh, transparent and our relationship has been so beautiful I think my best friend is my kids my spouse that I don't need to look beyond for anything they will tell me and yes if I need that nurturing sometimes I want to cry because I don't you know we don't sometimes don't want to hear the truth when somebody tells us that you're wrong and especially like when they tell me that that person the outsider was right so I'm like you don't love me. You love the outsider. You're not listening to me. Then no, look at it this way. You will understand our point. And I think now I'm being talked back or what I used to tell them I'm learning in coaching and in my business. Now I'm getting the taste of my own medicine or what has to be learned. So it's amazing. And this experience I share with you because literally I tell you that it has made us even more stronger. So with your partner, with your boss, with your team leader, with your colleague, with your professors. Come on. The bottom line to all this is that we forget. We completely forget and write this down. That each one of us is human. Yes, my friend, you are human. When we forget this, this also happens in our spiritual organizations. We find our pastors 
or a Maulvis or a priest, a Mr. or Miss Perfect, oh, they've fallen from heaven. They cannot commit wrong. They are trying. They are human beings. They are struggling to do things. But at the end of the day, the bottom thing is they are human beings. Errors will happen. So if you are thinking that it should be only goody-goody, a bed of roses in your institute, with your professors, in your company, with your boss, your uh, leaders or anything, sorry, my friends, it is not going to work until the day you accept that you are a human being. You cannot be a robot. Yes, we are living in high tech times. We work on technology, but you're not the technology. You use the technology. So the next, the better conflict resolution. Have we moved on this? I think I will, yes. Now, if I, uh, one second, give me a second. I think I've skipped a slide on your research. Give me a second. Yeah, I've not clicked on the thing. The next one comes to identify communication styles. Now, before you work on learning how to improve communication in a relationship, you need to realize that not everyone has the same communication style because we all are different. All fingers are not equal, yet they become your beautiful hand and help you, right? So all human beings are unique, beautiful, and perfectly created. Why do I use the word perfectly created? Because yes, humans are not perfect, but perfectly they were created. You are perfectly created because the perfect one above has created you. And there's nothing bad, nothing imperfect that comes from him, but only good and perfect. What you do further in your life is your problem. That's where we res uh, end up in a mess in our communications. The four main communication styles are passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, and assertive. Passive communicators keep their emotions inside and are the ones who can never seem to say no. A big problem from my generation and my community cultural issues, we don't like to say no. My friend, if you don't say no, you burn yourself out in trying to please people. Stop being a people's pleaser. If you cannot do it, say no, rather than making a blunder and doing it without love. It, you're going to lose all the fun of your efforts. Aggressive communicators are loud and intense but typically have trouble making real connections with others. The third one, passive aggressive. Communicators avoid conflict and use, use sarcasm to deflect real communication. The healthiest type of communication is assertive. And that's the last type of communication style. These people are in touch with their emotions and how to communicate them effectively. So know how to communicate them effectively. Emotions, my friends, as a counselor and an LNP master practitioner, please do not neglect emotions. They play a major role on what happens in communication. Like, let me just uh, give an example here too to you. Now, suppose I tell you to please Go out of the room because maybe I want to talk to your professor. And I say, can you please step out of the room? If you are in a different emotion, if you have already been told by others, get out of the room. You will, uh, your mind is that way. So you will think that I said, I very clearly said, please, could you go out of the room? I use the word please. And I said, yeah, go out of the room. And in a, my tone was also very nice. But you have taken it is that I said, get out of the room. And you might turn out and say, Dr. Daphne, what do you mean that I should get out of the room? I deserve respect. Now, my friend, your mindset, your emotions or past experiences are all playing up. And I know in the moment you cannot do anything because it's like, a, you know, when there's fuel and you set a matchstick, it immediately blows up into a fire, right? So it goes, but control your mouth control your tongue,
take a pause and then share it. That's what even I do with my family, my friends, and even my colleagues and my clients. I say, uh, you know, this is what I felt because the map is not the territory. So it's very important that you try to work on this. Next is, why doesn't it move forward? Yeah, okay, discover the human needs. There are six fundamental needs that all humans share, but each of us puts these needs in a different order in accordance with our core values. Once you discover which needs matter the most to you and the other, you will know how to communicate with the other in a way that fulfills them. So number one, under the needs, the first human need is the need for certainty. It's this need that drives us to seek out pleasure and avoid pain. Be sure, you know, when you get into a relationship also, you want to be sure the other person accepts you the way you are. You go to a job, you know that really they want, you want the certainty that they give you the appointment letter. That yes, they want your services because of your experience and your qualification. Institutes take you for admission because of your age, how much you have studied, your past background and other details. So certainty is at the core of every human being. It's this need that drives us to seek out pleasure and avoid pain, stress and emotional risks. Ask yourself these questions. How secure is the other feeling in our relationship? We all find safety and comfort in different things. Be open with the other person or persons that you are interacting with about what gives them certainty and makes them feel stable. So write this question, please, and ask yourself, how secure is the other feeling in our relationship? I know I'm secure on this platform and the comfort zone that Dr. Heather has given me. Oh my God. Yes, we have connected for a very short while and very, well, but I wow his personality. He knows where to draw the borderline, how to respect me, how to authority, everything. I have got my uh, co-need met as a woman that, yes, I can work with this person because he is the greatest role model for all who are on this. And I'm so, you know, uh, impressed as I see my other screen sometimes that I see that he's sitting on top of me. If you see, so, you know, he's right on my head. So it's, that's the way technology has done. It's not that he's sitting on my head. It's just a joke to make you smile and chill out. But he has given me certainty. And thank you so much for giving me that certainty. Dr. Heather, I really say that this has really made me to say yes to serving you today and your students and your audience. The next is variety. The second human need that affects communication and relationships is the need for variety. We don't like to do the same thing day in and day out. Simple as the food. If every day I give you uh, biryani as much as you love it, one day I assure you, you will get fed up. Even those who like to uh, join jobs where they have to fly every day, uh, time in business class. Oh, business class, first class, I'm getting to fly. Do it every day and I will tell you, you will hate that. So you, we all need that, you know, variety, right? So uncertainty isn't always scary if you know how to communicate with the other person. Relationships need healthy challenges that allow both parties to grow together. Both parties to grow together. It's not one-sided, it's two-sided, two-way traffic. As you learn how to communicate better, you'll find that variety keeps th things fun and exciting for all. It's a win-win, a no-brainer. Significance number three. Significance is a third need. We all need to feel unique and important. I'm sure right now, although I cannot see the screen is very small on my mobile, I'm sure when I, uh, you know, uh, 
focused and spoke about Dr. Heather. I'm sure he smiled. I'm sure he, even if he tried to control an external smile, internally he felt good because why do you feel good? He's human. He likes to be appreciated. He likes to be felt wanted and to know that, yes, he did something good and great. So please, communication is key to this particular desire because the other person needs to know that you need them, you want them, you appreciate them in a singular way, that they fulfill your needs, your wants in ways that only they can. Now, how does this relate to Dr. Heather? You'll say you're only on this platform. Yes, I go on many platforms, but you will see my tone, my energy, my vibration, Everything is different because, again, I'm mirroring. It's the communication that we connected so well that, you know, it's creating such good, positive vibes that I don't feel that and I don't see Dr. Heather falling asleep, listening to me, talking so much. And maybe he might even advise you to go and hear it again. Now that I'll have to see. Now, how do you demonstrate to the other person, not just tell them, that they are significant to you. You can show them through offering them support when they need it and spending quality time with them. So time is important. Number four, connection. Every human being needs to feel connected with the other. Effective communication in relationships lets us know that we are loved and can make us feel at our most alive. But absence of love and care can cause pain like nothing else can. Too often, we automatically say, I love you. I know in Pakistan, you will not normally say that you don't want to die. So by saying suddenly to a female colleague or something, I love you, right? But you do say to your parents and you're stepping out to your partner, I love you. But you know, this has become so automatic it just comes out so in order to solve conflict with your partner and friends it's not just saying oh i love you a heart or sending them emoji that's not enough we forget to show love in a real tangible way that speaks to the other's needs and wants so reverse this pattern consciously show them that you love them every day and you appreciate them in a way that speaks to their personal preferences and needs. Learning how to improve communication in a relationship is about realizing what language the other best understands and giving them love in that way. Like I said, please, if you don't mind, could you just step out? I just need to have a word with him alone. Thank you. So you see, even when I added the thank you, it added something else rather than saying, I would like you to please step out. So you see, a tone and all this, you need to understand what that person, the next person understands of you and knows. And this will only come over time that you will understand the next person. So growth is the fifth need. The human experience is one of the motion and without constant growth, our relationship will become stale and stagnant. So we all love growth, we love change, we love variety. We constantly endeavor to evolve along the different paths that interest us the most, whether these are emotional, intellectual, spiritual, or otherwise. The other person has the need for growth as much as you do. And when we learn how to communicate better, we can also learn how to better grow together. When was the last time you supported your spouse, your colleague, your classmate, your boss, or your professor? So ask yourself this, and how can you continue to support them in the fullest? Number six, contribution. This needs, need is about contributing and giving. Remember the secret to living is giving. And you know, people like to receive. But I will tell you, 
as faith says it, is that when you give and give in abundance, it comes to you a hundredfold. Contribution is our source of meaning. It determines who we become and solidifies our legacy, who we are and our role in the world. Consider what you give to the others and how you can give more. Are you giving your time, your undivided attention, the benefit of the doubt? Or are you giving them a second chance? You need to give people a second chance because we are, again, human. We do falter. We do make mistakes, okay? When communication in relationships is strong, both parties are able to continually come up with new and better ways to contributing to others' happiness. I know because, like I said, there's an age difference between me and my kids and with my clients and everything. But, you know, we come to a mutual understanding and we all win. So the last point of our topic we have reached to how to improve communication. I've given you some more tips previously also, but here I have a little bit more, you know, I love to a little bit dig deep, go into the rabbit's hole a bit to help you. So skills you must master. Not you may master, but you must master. So number one, where is number one gone? Why has it disappeared? Just give me a second. I think I have floated extra. Okay. I have no idea why it's not showing up on this. So give me a second. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. It's on the skills. Correct. Okay. According to psychology, you must master these skills to build healthy and lasting relationships. So happiness is key to any relationships. The Greek word for it is eudaimonia. These are the momentary pleasures of a great glass of wine. You know, people who drink alcohol, they find temporary. When a child smiles, temporary. Somebody says, I love you. Temporary. So we are not looking for this or a soft couch after a long day. But there are also deep meanings to this word of happiness. This ancient uh, Greek word, which conveys not fleeting good feelings, but rather the sum total of a life well lived, including a sense of meaning and virtue. To figure out how to best achieve this higher form of happiness, which is lasting happiness, you can't ask what cheers people up or brings them down day in and day out. You have to follow them over decades. As you saw the test, what Harvard did for 75 years. I'm not asking you 75 years. In today's days, people don't live that long, but go longer than a day or a month or a year. You have to follow them over decades to determine what really makes them flourish, feel fulfilled as they approach the end of their days on earth and leave fond memories for you. Happy childhood. Don't neglect this. As I said, map is not the territory. Your past experiences and everything plays a major role. Several of these concern the value of a happy childhood and will mostly be of interest to parents or those play, trying to come on terms with less than blissful start of life. But I tell you, no matter who you are right now in my audience, please visit childhood because many of your actions, behaviors, thoughts, roadblocks, roadblocks. You can't study. You cannot uh, have a happy marriage. You are not a good student. You can, are not good at a research. There might be some blocks it's good to visit. So the study shows a traumatic childhood doesn't necessarily doom to unhappiness. Not necessarily, okay? But it can. So if something's going wrong, you need to explore. But several other conclusions are helpful to pretty much anyone trying to make their way through life with dignity and a good career. And this, I will tell you, I've many times found when clients come to me as a counselor, they say a lot of things or even as a coach for business. Why are the roadblocks? And oh my God, they will say, no, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. And when we start exploring and go into their past, there's something even before their birth that has occurred which might be surprising to you. So childhood does play a lot of a thing. Now, strong partnership and career success. Few of us would like to argue, nor would we be surprised 
by the many other studies showing a strong link between a strong partnership and career success. Yet many of us struggle to find and keep that relationship and communication. What is that? According to Facebook's Sheryl Sandberg, the most important career decision a woman ever makes is who she marries. New research suggests she might be wrong or at least only partly right. The right spouse appears to be central to career success for both genders. Because, you know, when you are happy in your personal life, you, your performance also and your uh, educational life in every area of your life improves. Everyone knows that how you're getting along with your partner or your parents or your colleagues can have massive effects on your productivity and confidence day to day. So to, now we are in, I'm just skipping this for the uh, sake of time. So uh, changes, changing your heart. We are in the month of February. Who doesn't know that Valentine's Day comes this month? But who said it's only for lovers? It's for any human being, two or more, who are in communication. It's a talk of the heart. As I've meant, is highlighted earlier on love and hearts, okay? There are many tools to help improve communication in a relationship. But perhaps the most important thing that people need to understand about healthy and productive communication is that any skills and tools must rest on a stronger foundation of principles to be really effective. In other words, the crucial component lies not in simply changing our communication strategies, but also in changing our hearts. So what better time but now? As we are in the month of February, the love month, 14th February is Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day can be celebrated among siblings. Valentine, There are different levels, right? With your lover, you won't have the level that you have with your sibling or your parents. But Valentine's Day is for everyone. And above all this, we are only just started the second month of 2023. So if your resolutions are not working, which you made, you know, people make a lot of resolutions in the new year. But after the first, second week, it starts dying down. So time for you to make great new resolutions. And when you have a good communication and a relationship, you can ask other, the other person, would you hold my hand and help me to study better? Maybe we could do a project together. Maybe we could work on something together. How beautiful is that? to communicate and create a wonderful relationship. So I'm giving you a food for thought. Imagine you take a potato salad for an upcoming party. You make it the day before and you forgot to keep it in the fridge. It got spoiled. So the same way, you need to always add flavor, add freshness, take care of the beautiful salad of the next person. So fear versus courage, remove fear. In friendship, communication, any relationship, if there is fear, my friends, it is not going to work because fear is the enemy of healthy communications. So what is the antidote? Safety. The more you seek to help the other feel safe in conversation, the more likely you are to find elegant and mutual satisfying solutions to conflict. So take hold of your courage. Yes, grab it. Okay, grab it. Just do it. And take the leap of faith. Always strive to build bridges instead of building walls. Walls will break you. Bridges will connect you. And I have personally experienced it I worked a lot on my mindset, my other uh, cultural issues and everything. And I have built bridges that globally I am serving people. That I don't think there's a country that I don't cover up. So that's me. And you were all this time listening to Dr. Daphne Suarez, the founder and CEO of Carousel Moms Business and Leadership Coaching. I am a business and leadership coach 
counselor, timeline therapist, NLP master practitioner, nine-time best-selling author, including one with the rock star Les Brown, and I am also a mentor. Here is my QR code to scan it, or you can type LinkedIn, Linktree, Carousel Moms. And there are two gifts waiting for all of you there, which are free gifts to plan your 2023 very well and get organized. Also, I am having a symposium that starts on the 15th of February, right up to the 12th of March. We only taking uh, one and a half hours of yours. In that one and a half hours, there'll be two sessions, 45 uh, minutes for each. And we have global experts from 32 countries speaking on 40 topics. And what's more is that we are covering communication, mindset, leadership, wellness, relationships, career, personal development, business, tech tips, and motivational. And the cost for this is, it's also on my website, dollar $149, US dollars total for this whole month of training. And if you are busy, or according to your time zone, you cannot join because it is 5.30 to 7 p.m. UAE time, you will get recordings. So you can watch the recordings as many times as you like. And there's a good news to it. You get certificates. You will get 11 certificates by joining the Mega Symposium. So you can tune in into my... Thank you so much. And don't forget, if I could change myself and change the world, you can because I have given the golden key to you. The power is within you. Break free from whatever is holding you back. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Over to you, Dr. Heller. Wow, Dr. Daphne, what a wonderful session you have conducted. And I was highly engaged the way you were speaking and you were talking about the different wonderful concepts. And I love the way you explain it right from the first. Uh, what is communication? You just define the communication very nicely. It's not the hello, hi. That's it. It's It means a lot. And when you were and digging out further and i love the way you have given a different parts to the presentation and you were explaining each part with a what you know, what a wonderful in depth uh, i was very uh, enjoying this session and loved your analogies different analogies you were giving and i love the way you uh, quoted your own personal examples particularly your family how do you take the advices from your daughter and how, uh, what wonderful relationship you have with your family, your husband, even your kids, uh, the nice analogies, all the examples, I loved it. And I would uh, say that the content which you have shared with our audience from around the globe, uh, it is almost eight weeks uh, program. The content was so huge that uh, you covered the eight weeks program. And, uh, uh, and this was the snapshot when we were studying the business communication, the effective communication. All of this stuff was just like a recap and everything, every concept was going through my mind that uh, what a nice, great speaker you are that uh, within a one hour, you just brought back that kind of memories to me and uh, the way you were explaining. And I love the way you uh, step down all the, uh, the steps uh, which were very much uh, related and you were explaining everything with this so much soul heart that uh, I loved and I loved your tone and I loved your examples. Everything was so perfect. And I'm just uh, uh, thinking the way you are talking about the symposium and all these things, how great it would be if someone joined your symposium and they would be having the privilege to listen to you for three hours, four hours consecutively, how great content they will learn and how great experiences you will be sharing with them. So definitely we will be recommending to register for your this wonderful symposium, even take the one to one or maybe the group uh, uh, sessions with you in order to learn because you have a wonderful experiences. And as you quoted in your presentation as well, and we have uh, mentioned in the opening session that you have also worked with the Les Brown. He's a really wonderful, legendary person. 
and uh, this is very much visible in your own personality when you were talking you were just talking like him and you were quoting the different motivational things uh, which can motivate can motivate anyone uh, really you did a fantastic job uh, prof i really love this session and learned so many new things from you thank you on uh, behalf of the audience from around the globe and from us as well and uh, if you allow me then we will start uh, the question answer session few question we will uh, take uh, because uh, they needs your attention as well yes definitely yes. first of all thank you so much for your kind words i am humbled and i am honored to be here and i'd like to add something that might literally motivate your audience a bit more because i don't think very much people know too much about me besides my professional stuff but this would really empower because i know where you are located and that's why i just take a minute to add this my friends first of all for the mega symposium we are having international speakers i will not speak every day but i am lifting the flag of pakistan and the uae and i need your support to lift that flag and by the way i am a born and a raised pakistani so pakistan zindabad i know my style is different the way i talk i do that thanks to my awesome parents my mom was a lawyer also for the high court in pakistan so i would say that i think this would open more doors to you that i do understand urdu and that i am originally a pakistan pakistan zindabad over to the question session yeah thank you very much prof and now we start with the first question they want to ask it's a very wonderful question and they want your expert opinion on that that uh, uh, dr defni please guide us our business communication teacher says that in communication the listening skills is equally important so how do you see this statement along with the full communication yes please i would uh, really focus on an amazing question first of all but i would focus on the thing is that listening is equally important mm. but i for me it is more important mm. because what i have found as a coach and i uh, is this that when people speak ideas flow so learn to literally listen the problem is that we are always cutting people now somebody is talking and i say no 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 dr shah you know this and i feel this we always think we are the mr or miss know it all and we try to push over the wisest person and see what more do we need to look at you were created with two ears and one mouth so the answer remains there what is the success in your personal life your relationship in your business so what happens even in my business i listen let them speak and then like if today dr shah noticed it before we jumped on on the live i uh, listened to him but because of shortage of time i yes i did cut you a lot i know that because i was like you know the clock is ticking and we have to start but otherwise i would want to know what does he expect of me what do i need to do what's the audience so without listening how can i just because i would make a ruin of today's presentation because i would not know the age group who are the people who's the audience on what platform we are going live what we are doing so the in even in business in anything listen learn to zip your mouth and sort of just throw the key in other in urdu apna muh band karo so a little <laughs> silence does good just like how mom and dad told us when elders are speaking be quiet to so remember take the other person as more superior and listen to them mm -hmm. you will get a better picture and you will really serve and perform the best i hope yeah. i have answered the question yes yeah, so wonderful answer to this question and really i love your phrase that uh, when you listen the idea flows and then you can catch it even you can learn it and really you have quoted the elders as well most of the time our elders they have given us a lot of advices that please listen first in order to get the proper understanding that what is being said to you i and i think that's the wonderful part and i love the way you said that it's even more important that you first listen and then you just respond to it a uh, lovely answer and now second question is also somehow related to it 
but again needs your expert or opinion they want to ask that uh, uh, prof please share the tips on how to respond with clear and concise way once they say that uh, in, without proper explanation one cannot express themselves at the same time they say be clear and concise so how to respond to that yes please uh you need to avoid falling into a tangent falling into a tangent is a very uh common thing that normal human beings do we love to tell a story and i tell you as you grow in uh, experience and in age you start knowing especially our parents you know when you want to avoid something they ask you where were you all this time why are you late for dinner rather than saying that you know actually i was stuck with a friend you're scared to get a shout so you say you know actually the road was blocked and because the road was blocked i could not come from the left side i had to come from the right side now if they're living in the same home they know that you always come from the left side so you will have to use either the straight the side or the back road why are you going into all the detail? no but you know let me wait 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 i want to explain i took the right way and then the gps was not working and then i had to take the left way the adult or the next person has come to know that you are trying to tell your story and taking them on a joy ride so be see if you have to get a shout i will tell you don't take it negative because of shouts you might cry i know i sometimes and people have told me i have cried i felt her but i will tell you those things when i've sat down and thought about it it has made me i have not let it to break me so don't let uh, any person's comments break you but make you think back sit back and why did that person say because remember when we are sitting across a table what you see as number 9 i see as number 6 until i get up from the table and go to the other side i will not understand the situation so try to really be more show more empathy stop those long stories and you know be a bit transparency as the communication goes like now i know my children don't need to tell me stories after they do what to ask it you know mom I, I said, you know something. You told me that day that, and you told me today this. So, mum is not an idiot sitting out here. She's understood that there's something else, and then he's just smiling. Yeah, you caught us. I said, you forget actually who mum is. Okay, so you just don't you try to play around with me. So always stop making big big stories because you will be caught by your clients also. Yes, very nice suggestion and very nice answer to this question. and i think you have elaborated very well and uh, prof uh, since you had a wonderful presentation and most of the content uh, you have already covered i would say 70 to 80% you have answered just like uh, let me read few question which you have already addressed for example what are the uh, effective communication style uh, you have covered the effective listener the communication way the, how can we fine tune our message Uh, how can we assess the effective communication and how can we add value to the conversation all these things you have answered and now uh, one last question which is very important and they would love to uh, hear from you the question is a uh, uh, prof uh, would you like to share with us that how did you develop your communication skills and please share uh, do you still work to improve your communication style even now yes please sure that's like a really straight hit question and i need to be transparent to help you yes for me i am always a work in progress i learn and listen to any and every one but i choose what works for me because not every person or mentor style does work for me so list sabka suno karo apna so listen to everyone do your own wisely and i would give the uh, secret of myself is always find out how would you feel in that situation when you put yourself in other people's shoes you would be able to understand i get offended i'm not saying no people are sometimes mean rude or because like i said if i say please go out of the room i say get out of the room i remember some time back during the pandemic when first we went on zoom calls and there was a person who was not of my 
country okay and you know we put lot of your know, please bhai ben or brother sister can you please and this and that and she wanted the camera on now the problem was one i did not know what was happening secondly the kids were around and you know youngsters don't like to be on camera to other people so a little bit my backdrop was giving trouble with a green screen and stuff like that and she came on the phone and the, uh, came on the zoom call and she was like daphne put on the camera or get out of this call right now literally i wanted to go under the table i wa- literally was ready to break out into tears now she was not of our nationality at all and that was a style of talking but i actually what happened with me i came into a stubborn mode i said okay you think because i'm non white i will now show you properly you wait i i was obviously my house she couldn't touch me and i said i will not move on what grounds should i move first of all over 4 years we have been training together you have seen me physically and you have no right to tell me to leave this call i will not leave this call do what you want right now now this is not my attitude at all but would you you know what you say in that stubborn anger a little bit that was in me i was like why are you trying to humiliate me because everybody was from asian countries except her and i know even during the past 3 years she was the one all the time oh my i don't know how you what the hell that's why honestly i will tell you the pandemic was painful and hurt everybody but i loved the pandemic and why did i love the pandemic because i believe in equality and every single country of the world suffered the pandemic and i was ye lord i praise you thank you yes 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 good they are all suffering because they need to know the pain why is it always third world countries going through all these pain and all these traumas so you understand my ego came a bit in me but then i worked i spoke to the family i shared and they said you are very good you did not back off but you know take control that now if someone says it to me i might land to their house and help them to get out from the zoom call so you see is something that you keep on growing you keep on learning i cannot give you my dear or person who asks this question i cannot give you one method methodology because one cap does not fit all i cannot use the same attitude with somebody else now if i use it with a pakistani they will say you know they might even come and kill me the next moment because after all, when i say kill i'm not saying physical please don't get it wrong pakistanis are not terrorist or anything they are the most wonderful people you can see me a life still all right the best country i'll tell you in pakistan the beauty that you see in that country people look at your face when i came first to the gulf nobody looked at my face even on eid day nobody wished me eid mubarak i was like seriously nobody even says hello this is the beauty of our country so really god bless pakistan i hope i have uh, answered your thing even what i have shared with you today my friends you don't have to do it so uh, dr heather is not putting a gun on your head that you have to follow what dr daphne has said listen to many use your wisdom and your knowledge and walk forth and my secret of success is only two things not no other le knowledge is come everything is come communication put it secondary believe in allah believe in yourself if you believe in these two things that's how you saw my last video i am unstoppable <laughs> really i am enjoying the way you are giving answer uh, dr daphne really uh, you are a great speaker and uh, what a wonderful motivational speaker you are you can motivate anyone and you are quoting different examples and different things uh, Uh, which is really a great uh, skill and uh, uh, i know that it's very hard skill and you have learned it after a very hectic uh, efforts and uh, dedication and commitment towards that thing and uh, i love your phrase that to keep on learning and keep on growing and i think that is much uh, very much important thing that we should be striving to be best because uh, we say excellence is a journey not a destination and very nicely you have uh, talked about that uh, listen to everyone but do whatever you think is right and this is what uh, a business philosopher the jim rohan also says that uh, uh, whatever you do that should be the product of your conclusion listen to everyone 
but uh, your conclusion should be product of yours one uh, so that's why they say great mind things they like you you resonate them as well and uh, really uh, dr defni i enjoyed this session you, you explained each and every point very nicely and i would say that and i would appreciate uh, uh, your powerpoint slides it were very simple at the same time it were very heavy as well because uh, the way you were explaining each and every point was so nice so great that uh, uh, this one word which was visible to the audience backed by wonderful explanation what a wonderful combination it was and i was highly engaged in your wonderful presentation so thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation and we loved it we enjoyed it and uh, at the end of the session uh, we ask our each guest about their message to the world as a speaker so prof what is your message to the world as a speaker author researcher trainer learner professional and educator yes please you are beautiful you are perfectly created you are unique and so is your life so nurture your life love your life like no other because no one can love you and your life the way you love it yourself so strive to build lasting relationships through good communication first start with yourself before you go beyond go within spend that time really understand why am i doing this what makes me happy because as a counselor why am i sharing this and some of you might be questioning if she's a counselor how she's a coach also it's actually the mount i have seen the world giving up on life because either our elders our teachers or even our spiritual people have either told us something different and we have misunderstood because again the 9 and the 6 they told us something we understood it wrongly and we think that life is torturous not worth living money is our god we have to only earn money for me when i get my clients in my business coaching i always tell them money will come but right now remove money i'm not talking about money they say but we need money 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 Ms. dr daphne how do we make money i said i'm not interested in money money will come first focus on giving your very best to the others and they mm. will automatically like a magnet you will pull them you will attract them to yourself so that is how i am getting people i do not know dr uh, heather i do not know actually i would like after this call to ask you from where did you hunt me down because literally i can see people are being attracted i give i give in over deliver i give in abundance as you see even in this training i have over delivered i over deliver i give in abundance even my clients what they fix with me my program or my package i work with them till they get guaranteed results because i am confident in myself that if they take my 12 month program they will get results that is why i can promise that you will work for me free after that if i have not given you the results so friends believe in yourself because again as a daughter of the soil of pakistan if i could rise and make my name in us uk canada hong kong new zealand go scroll on my facebook all the newspaper highlights are there of everywhere that i have been featured i think there's no under, except under the table i don't remember being featured but i think in every country i've been featured by the grace of the almighty thank you so much and wonderful people like calvis and uh institute and also dr heather i have beautiful people touching and making my lives yeah thank you very much uh, dr daphne really uh, we uh, are so glad that you accepted our invitation and you spared a wonderful of your precious time and you guided from around the globe uh, really that was a great session and uh, i personally thank you because i learned so many new things from you and uh, you are a wonderful speaker and narrator and motivational speaker and i'm sure that the people who are watching and the people who will be watching in the future this video that uh, please uh, 
learn from our distinguished guest speaker uh, because she's so wonderful uh, person, not even in the having a great knowledge and uh, grip on this uh, wonderful subject, but it's a, she's a great human being. So you can follow her through her email and she is always ready to help and to guide you in a right way. So that's all we have time for today. And thank you once again, uh, Dr. Daphne Soros. Thanks. And I would like to, yeah, thank you. And I would like to thank our audience who joined us. If you have additional question about information shared today, please email us or connect to the speaker directly through her email or social media account, which we will be providing in the description of this video as well for easy way to uh, connect with her. Thank you all for your support and liking our session. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. And please do not miss any session. Until next session, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.